All right, and we're recording. So you're telling me you get a uh, you get shin splints even when you're not juicing? Oh yeah. Well, man, I've been running for shit. I'm 39. I've been running like that for I don't know over 20 years, man. Like you know, in that five to ten mile range a day. Do you notice a difference from when you're on the sauce and when you're not in your shin splints? Ah, uh, yeah. if I'm running an oral, yeah, but I I don't really. I mean. I haven't ran a ton of orals because I get sick of the side effects. And so I've never really had a problem. Just early, early Anivar use was the problem. How about tightness on your lower back and, and other muscles? Uh, uh, do you get that as well with or without the juice? I'll tell you a story real quick, a fast one. So one of my early on cycles, I thought I was getting uh test Anavar and Mastron and I gained like 15 pounds in three weeks, two and a half, three weeks. And I wasn't eating like crazy amounts more. And I certainly shouldn't be getting that kind of size with test Mastron and Anavar. It turns out I had D ball and I got some terrible back, you know, lower back and I already have a bad lower back. So it was, it was bad, man. But other than that, that I really haven't had any issue on orals with, with the back at all. So the source basically swapped out the compounds on you. Well, he had, he had said, cause I actually know him, know him, know him. And he said that this, he had found out only because a girl, he also gave him to had all kinds of strange side effects that you should not be getting with Anavar, Right. So he was at least claiming that he got screwed by the, the raw source. So I have the line from him. Yeah, that's well, that was the claim. I had no reason to not believe him because he never, you know, had any issues before. Poor girl. Yeah, she was she was a mess, man. Like from what he told me, it, it didn't sound good. Didn't. Yeah, you know, it, it happens a lot. These guys don't don't send out raws for, for testing. Uh they just kind of trust the trust the supplier and, and this happens quite quite a bit, actually. That yeah, I know. It's it, it never ceases to amaze me that it, it just never, it never slows down. It's just like that forever. It always will be. There's no way around. It. Yeah. So do you think, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Do you, do you think that underground uh, gym guys are still like, how are pe most people getting their sores nowadays? What do you think? Do you think most people, because there was a time where you could only really get it at gyms um, back in the day, you know, when you and I were like kids and then there was a time where everybody was getting it online. And then I think um, I think it went back to, to the gym dealer uh, the last five, 10 years. What, what do you think? Well, here, here's, here's where you got to look at it from a far point of view, right? So I can tell you where it is in certain areas. But like, so the bigger areas, like your Vegas, where you've got all the guys from Olympia's training, and your LA's and those areas, the gym guys, they're in there, right? You know, but a lot of the smaller areas, smaller towns, smaller this, for one, everybody fucking knows everybody, right? So the word spreads around too quickly and people, they don't last. It just doesn't work. And and plus, this, it's not as big of a deal to guys in certain areas as it is in others. So I think it's variant, but I, I do agree there's a lot more in gyms than there probably had been. At least I don't. That's another thing. Now it's different for me. When I used to keep my ear to everything, uh, the younger I was and everything. And now when I go to the gym, I'm like in and I'm out. I don't want to listen, talk. You know what I mean? It's different because I got other businesses to do and other shit to do. And it's just, it's different. But there's, I think it's both ways on online and, you know, at the gym. So I, I think it's going to continue to be that way, depending on locations. I'll tell you a phenomenon. I think that the majority of stores that cater to meatheads got them for you too. I think oh, yeah. uh, in, especially in rural, rural areas. Uh, I think a lot of the stores are because uh, a lot of, so a lot of stores that were just carrying like, right. Your local supplement stores that were carrying the same stuff that later be, was cheaper on Amazon to, to buy because all of these brands went direct to consumer on the Amazon platform and circumvented a lot of the, the local stores, a lot of these stores either, either closed or they sold to somebody else that came in and knew 
the, the new store, the today store, the one that you see that where, where people go to, you have to make the shakes and you got to have the meals available that you could either pick up there or sign up to have delivered to your door. You got to have the perishables. You got to have uh, the meatheads in there to actually give you some advice on what you need while you get a shake done. So it became a, a service almost slash kind of hangout spot. Um in order to survive against Amazon, because how do you survive against them if you just go price to price, per bottle per bottle? And I think along with that resurgence, you get a lot of very entrepreneurial guys that have two, one, two, three, four stores, five stores, and maybe not anybody with five. That that's a guy already kind of who, who can outgrow this, but a guy with one or two stores will most likely keep the SARMs under the under the table there for you <laughs> yes <laughs> and if they really and, and they'll sell you those arms and they'll be in, in the back somewhere they'll they'll sell them to you maybe if they know you a little bit better they'll even have some peptides in some refrigerator in the back somewhere oh and, yeah and uh and if they really really know you then they got that test they got that trend they got that deca they got them d balls <laughs> got all of that for you if they know you on and i think and that's how the stores today have managed to to really have managed really to to survive uh at least at least the stores that are catering uh to customers in the sports nutritional realm that and also carrying smaller boutique brands that aren't kind of kind of uh sold everywhere but but nowadays i think the stores are, are came back big too man everywhere in, in this, especially the small towns Oh think? shit! Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, man. You know how many people just write me online and tell me, "Oh, I got SARMs at my local supplement shop," and my response is always the same, "Dude, you can't buy some." You know, like what the? My my question is, and always will be, only because I've seen it so many times where they buy shit there and they're the results just don't make sense. Okay. It doesn't make sense to tell me you gained 20 and 25 pounds on SARS. I'm sorry. I don't care how much I like them. Okay. I'll always at least be honest about it. That's not, you're not taking that. And it, you know, you know, when it, you know, damn well, when it happened, you remember when all the pro hormones got banned. And, and this is a story that a lot yes, of people yes. don't want to tell. 2014, you know? they all got banned. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. I remember because, well, you remember. Uh, and, at that time, everybody, a lot of people were stuck with, fuck, hundreds of thousands, some people, millions of dollars of raw sitting there. What are they going to do? What are you going to do? You can't eat that. You can't eat that loss. So a lot of them all, all of a sudden switched to SARMs, right? And then they start at least spiking the pills or a flat ass just throwing the whole entire thing and pro-hormone in there. And it started to, this is how SARMs got a bad name because they never did before ever. And granted, they weren't as mainstream, but a lot of the, the things you'll read that were published, oh, well, they can have this effect, this effect. And, and no, they can't, but it was flooded with so many different things and they, people don't know what they're taking and you're getting people giving weird results, weird side effects. It doesn't make any sort of sense. Well, the answer is, I just told you, the pro-hormone ban is what caused that. And, you know, it is it is what it is. A lot of places just either are too sloppy and don't test their stuff when it comes in. They don't care yes. about, about, about their prestige and what they're trying to bring to the table, to the market. Even if it is a, a black underground market, a gray, whatever whatever you, you, you were involved in, a lot of people just don't have, like we're talking about, the juice dealer, you know, who got bad raws, you you just don't don't have don't care about it enough to to test and really do your due diligence as much as you can in your part. Some of these guys they'll just throw in whatever they get from their supplier, and and sometimes they maliciously do spike some of these compounds with SARMs. Right? We, we see that a lot. Guys reporting side effects that shouldn't they shouldn't be getting from them. No, it, it happens far too often. And hey, look. It doesn't always have to be that, oh, the source is doing this or doing that. Sometimes, in fairness, uh, it's not with malicious intent. It's that you get a little too comfortable with your supplier. You get a little too comfortable and have too good of a relationship, and you let your guard down, and then they, they get you because something's happening on their end. 
you know because yeah. a lot of these a lot of these people that you're getting the raws from they're making them right on site they're in the factories they're making them right there on site and so you don't know i mean you don't know they can they can send you whatever the hell test report they run so you get these these one page printouts that are in in chinese or, or whatever the language you don't know what the fuck you're reading or what the you know what i mean i mean you don't i, I could make that for you in five minutes easily no chain it's of custody difficult. either that that paper means nothing because nothing you don't, you don't know you don't no. know if the scoop the gram that was used to test for this here uh report you don't know if that scoop came from that break over there <laughs> so you don't really Talking right man you don't know where that fucking scoop came from so so just because you get they give you a report it means nothing you, when when the stuff comes in if you're serious about running your thing doing your outfit you test your shit and and if you're really crafty you put it online somewhere let people know that you actually do test your batches and and show show the batch reports at least if they're up there people at least know you're doing something and Dude, a lot of a lot of these guys don't a lot of these guys cowboy it out and and have uh and have issues and so i wanted to i wanted to ask you some some stuff about songs because you know you know a lot more about it than than i do now um we we we've gone through this before. We'll go through it again in the podcast. So so some of these aren't really technically SARMs because they have no interaction with the androgen receptor. Some of them do have some good uh, interaction with it. Um, out of all of the ones out there, which one do you think is the strongest? You know, somebody listening and wanting to know. Well, okay, which one can I use that'll give me the closest effect? To say, take in one of the weaker anabolics like Anavar, Winstrol. Would, would it? Would it? Which one would give me the close? Would get me the closest to that, or or do I need to stack them to get uh, something comparable to that? Well, and and I do get that question a ton about the stacking. Do I have to stack? And I, my answer is always no. You don't have to, but you don't have to do anything, right? You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do, but. Most of them will give you nice results by themselves, a hundred percent. But if you want to really get the most out of them, you stack them, at least two of them. You don't have to, because you, you'll see me lay out stacks all day long on the forums. And sometimes you'll see big ones with four, you know, three, four in there. Sometimes you'll see just two and you'll wonder why. Well, I want to see how strong and what you're after and how many different, you know, areas you're trying to address. Right. And so I, I, kind of just try to tailor them all to the needs and necessities, the age, the condition, all of that. If I don't get all that information, it makes it hard for me to tailor it properly. But um, anyway, to your question, the strongest it's, it's S 23 hands down. I mean, S 23, I don't even, and I, I'll always say this about S 23 is it to me, it should just be categorized as a steroid period. Um, we're talking about something that shuts you down to the effect of it's actually used as a male contraceptive. The difference is, is that it, it's not that difficult of a recovery. While it shuts you down very fast, as soon as you stop taking it, and this was actually shown in the few studies that they have on it, that the bounce back is very quick and you get it back. It's not like when you use a steroid and you get suppressed, you run a PCT, a lot of people say they never feel the same again, right? Well, with this, that's the complete opposite. So that's the difference. So that's, I guess, what has that SARM quality to it. But S23 is is something where you could easily put it up against some more mild steroids and, and it would it would stand a good fight. You know, I, I can't say that about most SARMs that I could say, oh, well, that's, I could say to you, well, to me, S4 is the, Winstrol or Anavar would be the S4 in the steroid world, but I would never try to tell you the S4 is as close to as strong as they are. That would be ludicrous. But now, they would, you know, they'd be comparable in what they can do, right? So, 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 so here's, here's a follow up question to, to that a little bit. Now, some of the milder steroids, Anavar, Winstrol, uh, for a guy like you and I to really get a good result with it, we, we're looking at 40, 50 megs. To get to get something some something nice going, yeah. when you have a, a female, um, she can do it depending on her goals, obviously. But if she's not competing or anything crazy, she can do as little as five milligrams, and look good off of it. You know, genetics counting for, but about five makes for a girl. Now, 
when it comes to SARMs, have you noticed that the dosing protocol for women and men is, is in somewhat near the same scale as, as the steroids we, we've known for years? Or is the dosing protocol female to men uh, work at a different scale when it comes to, to SARMs, when it, you know, and milligrams per milligram? So like the dosing you just gave for men, you know, I totally agree with that dosing 40, 50, 60 for Anavar and Winstrel both. Right. And I think we've always pretty much been exact on where we figured that. And for the woman, you know, easily, easily five milligrams of Anavar. So there's a pretty big, pretty wide gap there. I mean, it's pretty damn wide, but with SARMs for most it's, damn near identical now there's a couple that i've seen well a the woman doesn't need that much so why give it to her if she's going to get the same result because the chance of side effects higher at a certain you know certain dose like there's a couple that i always tell the woman start off at half or just run it at half that's your lgd your rad 140 uh mk677 even though MK is not really side effect or heavy or anything, and really none of them are, but um, there's just certain things that I've noticed and witnessed consistently that females have a little bit of trouble with. Um, MK2866, very, very mild, but some of them, when they go a little bit higher, because one of the side effects for a female is an enlarged clitoris, and um, some of them, have, and, and uh, you know, their menstrual could be thrown off and I've seen it often and I have told them scale it back scale it back but they're they're a lot closer than than you could do with generally any steroid you know pretty much so yeah it's a lot easier for women to um, dose similar to men that's very interesting isn't it how the dosing <laughs> scale is, is way different that just goes to show you how uh, how different they are so best fat burner out of them all and if you then if you had to do a fat best a, a best fat burning stack so uh, we're going into into summer as of the day that this podcast is going to be published and a lot of people are there wondering well if i go pick some up what would be the best let's say they want to just try one I'm, I'm just try one see how i feel on it and then if i feel good i'm going to go and drop a, a whole stack what what's good fat burning stack protocol that one can could get on to make some good progress in the next uh, couple of months here with with summer just just right around right around the corner all right well this this is my wheelhouse all right you know you know me well enough i i am a cutter i'm i live to cut that's all i do i cut 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 right so it's my wheelhouse gw501516 will always be my answer unless something new comes out sometime or whatever and it probably will but this isn't to me it's it will always be gw it's no brainer it's people like sr 9009 and that's fine i do too but it's not it, i'm sorry gw hands down it does so much for you I will always have that at the top of my list. Now, granted, it caters more to what I want being a long distance runner, but that that for sure, hands down, I, I don't feel there's even anything that can compete with it in the SARMs world. As far as the stats, you're always going to have GW in there, obviously. You're always going to have SR9009. Those are, if you want to cut, that's your starting point is those two. Then it's how aggressive do we want to go? The next step would be to add S4. Um, that, th that trio right there is one you'll see me often recommend to somebody that's a little bit newer to this or, uh, like a female or somebody I'm just trying to take it a little easier on, but still get big results. If we want to go more like an advanced cutting stack, you add RAD 140 into there. Um, you know, what's funny, you'll find that as time's gone on now and more people have had RAD, used it, experienced it, and you'll find search terms, right? RAD 140 is being searched more than any other SAR. Now, GW is always going to be the top seller. It's always what people are going to go to first. And you already know why, because I said how, how much stronger it is than anything in the fat burning area for a multitude of reasons. And we can go into that when we maybe we'll just talk about GW sometime. But um, 
the RAD 140 does so much. I mean, it's, it is uh, like a Swiss army knife of, of everything. People don't talk about the endurance you get from it, how good you feel on it, the fat loss you get on it, yet you still get strong. You still get size. I mean, it's a, MK2866 was the one I always said was the most versatile, but now to me, it's the second most versatile after seeing the capabilities RAD really has. It's that good. The one thing about MK is the healing and RAD doesn't have that. And for mo for a lot of people, rightfully so, you know, that's a draw to MK. And it's not like you can't stack them both. You're just getting into five, six arms then on that stack and it's kind of unnecessary. Um, but that that four piece I just gave you, that's a that's an advanced ultra cutting stack. And that's the one I like to see people on that are comfortable with that and have more experience. All right. So run run by real quickly again. What are the what are the four that that one would stack? And then I'll ask you you'd some go, questions specifically. Yeah, you'd go GW501516, SR9009, S4, and RAD140. All right, great. So let me ask you this: Out of uh, that stack, which one is helping you maintain your muscle mass as you shed the fat? Which one is, is helping you kind of cover that angle of it, of the cutting stack? That's going to be your S four and your RAD one hundred and forty. Now, the, the you know the good thing about GW and SR, if you're just cutting and you don't use one that's helping, because they they don't build muscle or anything like that, but they don't. You don't lose a ton of muscle with them either. It's kind of strange how that works because it doesn't, if they're not building muscle, they shouldn't be preventing it. But for whatever the reason, I, I and it's I not, I'm not just they, they winging just, it. They just make the energy more available from, from lipids, from fats, from your fat storage. This is probably what's going on. More than likely. Because at the end know, of the day, when you lose muscle during a cut, it's just your body is repurposing that energy you got stored there to keep you moving. But if you got, something in you like gw that's basically burning fat uh then you'll you'll have more energy and to spare and plus you're 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 uh most likely or not if you're if you're using gw you're hitting the gym you're hitting some weights so you're giving your your muscles that signal to cause that response uh, that that might be a reason in theory what, what do you think well yeah and, and that that's a good point and and i'm going to piggyback off that one of the things that I've always said about GW is it's the enhancer for your performance enhancer. And some people, you know, that aren't super quick or whatever, they go, what the fuck's he talking? It enhances what you're already taking as an enhancer. So what my point is, is that it allows you to always do more, even on another performance enhancer where you think you're kind of maxed out. It, it just gets more out of it because building your VO2 max, allowing you to continue to go longer and harder, of course, it's it's indirectly helping you to build more muscle by allowing you to do more, right? So maximum use will help to get maximum output, will get maximum results. So that's one of the things just like you just brought up about it. So yeah, definitely, 100%. So, uh, and obviously your fat burners in the stack would be GW and SR, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, how do, now we've, you're the right guy to ask. Some people have and always do compare GW to SR. Uh, in your opinion, how are they similar and, and different? What, are, what what sets them apart? Or in your particular case, what would make you prefer one or the other for some kind of usage scenario? I think the the first one you're gonna you're gonna always get is the the talk about you know, the bioavailability of SR9009, and we can go back and forth and back and forth on it, it to, the, to the point of exhaustion. And you can tell I already don't want to do it because I've done it so many times. Um, but that can get into your head, all right? And there's, there's also different opinions on how to use it and dose it. I went through them all. My belief, and, and I don't, you know, people disagree or, and some totally agree, is that it has to be taken every two to three hours. Half-life is extremely short and taken daily. Some people just say, use it when you're about to do something. I don't prefer that. Um, I like to let it run continuously throughout. You can do it however you damn well please. I, I'm not here to tell you my way is the only way. But the point in that is it's a very annoying you know, way that you have to deal with it. It's kind of like 
you know, when you have to inject every other day. Like for me, I hate that because I don't like to inject at all. I, you know, some people love it. I find it to be just very uh, pesky and annoying. Um, so there, GW does more in general. So SR 9009 mainly is targeting uh, your metabolism, right? So it's trying to fix, you know, any kind of metabolic disorder enhanced metabolism and it's kind of just geared mostly and generally in that direction with help and endurance like gw does but gw it it, it doesn't do anything to the extent or you know sr doesn't do anything to the extent of gw meaning gw is going to build that vo2 max and hit the endurance so hard but it's also going to help your metabolism and it's helping your blood pressure your cholesterol i mean it's doing so much it was actually intended to treat obesity, okay, and then it, and and also to help with cholesterol and things of that nature. So everybody thinks it's only used for you know endurance, but that wasn't even the intent originally. The intent was to treat obesity. So you can see why it. I, I keep going back to it over and over, and I'm always gunning. If you ask, you know, is it being the best and most effective? So here's a follow-up question to that. Uh, one way that I've seen people use it and that I've, uh, I've discussed with other people about using it was you take the GW and then you only use the SR as a, as a pre-workout, as a pre-event uh, dosing sort of situation. You don't, you don't take it every three hours throughout the day. No, just if you're going to work out, take it an hour before you work out and you're good. And if you don't work out, then you don't take it on that day. But the GW, you take every single day. What do you think of that protocol? What are you what something like that? I and and that was why I said previously that my way is not the only way, and that what you just said is another way that I like a lot. Um, hundred percent. I I totally get that approach as well, and I I'm one of those people where you could come to me and I'll listen to you, tell me your way. And you could actually convince me. I I'm not stuck in one way, you know, like you see coaches that they're going to do it one way forever. And that, that'll, that'll ruin your career. So I don't think I know everything. And I also know that there's different people with different needs, different responses, different reactions. So you've got, you always have to keep an open mind. You can't, you cannot be closed minded. You shouldn't in anything in life, but you, you absolutely can't with the things we're talking about, you know, everybody's different and you have to be aware of that i see all these people that well i did it then and i had and that's like that's great because that's helpful because we know but your word is not gospel here right i mean we've all had different experiences and, and me and you could go back and forth for a year on on the different factors as to why so no yeah i i like the approach that you just gave um i support that one too 100 percent yeah, I mean, I I've seen a lot of guys uh, uh push push that one out there because of the short acting half life with with SR. Uh, so, w- what are mistakes that you see people making when it comes to SARMs out there? Because there's a lot of people using them. I mean, it's I've been around this fitness thing since I was in my 20s. I'm, I'm 40 now, and I've seen fads and things come and go. I mean, I've seen everything. There was a time where guys were injecting something called Lutase which was uh, to help uh, well, cow- cattle give birth and you're supposed to inject it into the muscle and the muscle will feel tired. Like you just worked it out. I mean, I've seen some crazy stuff out there. You know, my- yeah. yeah, brother. And, and you would, you, you uh, have to, after you injected it, say on your bicep or your shoulder, you'd have to go use the bathroom right away, obviously, because it would, it would, it would make, get you going. And then the oh, muscle, yeah. would, and then the muscle would feel like, like you just did a whole full workout with it. It's pretty, but and then, uh, after a while, everybody figured out that it was the science that didn't work and this thing wasn't, wasn't going to build any muscle for anybody. I've seen some some nutty stuff out there. When it comes, <laughs> when it comes to this new SARMs thing that that you really kind of just, I mean, SARMs have, have kind of sort of taken over. I think that 
I think that the the, the, era, the era when there were a lot of pro hormones being sold, guys were having maybe some issues here and there with some of the side effects from the pro hormones. And so maybe they wouldn't always come back. You know, they would do a cycle. Maybe they would do uh, two cycles and then they would never really come back because they couldn't deal with some of the acne. Some guys are lactating out of one nipple for taking, you know, uh, super draw, halo draw. It, you know, you, you, these were basically just modified different steroids and they had the very same side effects as steroids and then circa 2010 2010 a couple of years before a couple of years after we get all these SARMs coming in and now these things are not having all of these same side effects uh they make they give you better than natural results i mean let's be realistic you get better results than you than you would natty uh you could still grab them over the counter and the the side effects just aren't as bad. And for what most people want, for what most people's real goals and desires are, which is just a, a beach body for the most part. I think I think 99.999% of the people at the gym are not high level. They're just they just want beach bodies. So uh, Psalms have just become a, a real easy, simple way to kind of get there, haven't they? And what have you seen? What are the crazy things that you've seen or the things or the mistakes that you see a lot of people are making right now in the SARMs market, in the SARMs realm? What are, what are some of the problems that you're seeing out there right now, in your opinion? Well, the, the, the one problem that's, it's actually gotten a little bit better over time, um, but was rampant for, especially at the beginning was just the, lack of quality or knowing what you're getting and lack of trust and look there's good people there's bad people so there, there's good companies and there's bad companies there's also companies that don't have bad intentions but they a lot of people it's like oh well you know let, let's use bitcoin as an example i want to get into that they don't have a fucking clue about anything to do with it they just want to do it because they think everybody else is doing it and they get involved. And it's not just like this, this, and this, there's a lot more to it uh, than, than you would think. And you just can't go, Oh, well, that looks like a good business. I'm going to do it. It doesn't work that way. So you've got those kind of people that were doing it. Right. And you don't know who to trust. You don't know there there's fake websites up all over. I mean, I could go on and on and on. So the point is, is that, a lot of times still there's a quality issue. And, and then here's one of the major flaws we're going to always run into is people don't do any blood work. So if you're not doing any blood work, pre-cycle, mid-cycle, post-cycle, you're not going to know what's causing what, how far into it, because all this data is important, right? If you're telling me you've got this certain side effect after two to three weeks, then I can go, okay, it's probably related to this. This is probably what you're taking, da, 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 da. If you don't give me anything to work with and you just show me a fucked up blood panel at midway through and have nothing previously or later on at, at the end, we're going to have a hell of a time guessing on what, what caused it. So lack of, of understanding, people just want to buy stuff and use it without knowing what they're doing. You shouldn't use any PED or shit. You shouldn't use any supplement for that matter until you really know about it, know what it is what the side effects can be, what to do. I mean, that's, it should be common sense, but it's not. And that's part of the reason these things all get such a bad name because of people misusing and just basically being flat ass careless. I mean, I, I'll never understand that, but there's certain things that are better just left to be. Um, another thing is, and, and you know this, Rick, <clears throat> because we're always going to see this people getting greedy wanting to run it too long wanting to run it too high well if i got this kind of result at 25 why can't i go to 50 why can't i go to 75 that type of person people that run it too short and then say it's it's not any good or they run it too low and they don't know what they're doing people running four week cycles and then saying oh sarms don't work this and that it's like brother you didn't even get to the peak I mean, so there's a variety of things that I see daily. Um, all you can do is try to help people, you make videos, put out content, and hope hope that they search it out and read it and find it. You can't do anything other than that. You know, you know it, it was real easy to um, feel some some bad side effects from 
the pro hormones, the old ones, the ones that got banned oh, yeah. in 2014. Shit. So if you were fucking things up and, and you weren't kind of doing things right, or uh, you were overdoing it, you were mixing too many things together, you were being an asshole, you were drinking. I mean, you would fucking know it. Those pro hormones would oh, make you feel yeah. like shit. With some Psalm, with Psalms, I think people uh because they don't really give you a lot of a lot of side effects that you can feel right away. I think a lot of people uh, misuse them because they don't they don't understand like hey this internally could be I, I'm I'm running it too high what could it be doing to me internally I feel fine externally and I think that is a, a big difference between uh, the the new Psalms guys that, that are using Psalms compared to the pro hormone guys and I compare these those two because you know it's sort of the same kind of uh a market for bodybuilders just that that better than natural product that they can still you can still go to your local store and buy right, right. so yeah so it's just that that better than natural product and and i, I think it, part of the abuse comes from that man they're just too forgiving with people that are idiots and even then i still see people having terrible side effects and and reporting um really really bad side effects from abusing the arms too long too much too many mixed together and still eating like shit you know cholesterol uh, salt uh, you know, high salt, cholesterol, sugars, all kinds of things, um, because they're just using the the drugs and not not even really managing their diet properly, which is where where it should all start, right? Well, yeah, I mean, every you know how it is, right? Everybody wants something for nothing, and that's not just with what they buy; they want something to do all the work for them. Nothing that you take, steroids, whatever, is going to do all the work for you. It's just not possible. It, it's it's just that's a whole nother story, right? But my, I was going to ask you a question. How many guys over all of these years that you know will tell you, oh, I enjoy the side effects when I'm taking a steroid? Like who, who enjoys side effects? Absolutely no. I think the only side effects some guys enjoy from taking steroids, the only one is uh, you shoot blanks and you can't, you can't get a chick pregnant. Besides yeah. that, I don't yeah. think there's anything, any other side effect that's uh, that's that anybody likes, dude. No, and and so, and you've I'm sure you've experienced this many times when you're on cycle. If the cycle is is if you're getting too much on the side effect side, and you easily can, you easily can with with things that even aren't that strong. You can easily be miserable on D ball. You can easily be miserable with Tren, obviously. Um, Deca, you can be miserable with. I mean, you can be miserable with any of them. The point is, if you're miserable, what's the point in the cycle? You're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to make any progress if you can't work out. You know. So, I, and and I've seen so many guys that that tell me, well, they've got this going on, this going on, this going on. And I'm wondering, well, how the hell? Because your recovery is already going to be bad you know, with that kind of side effect. And if you're working out like shit, one of the, the most painful fucking cycles I ever ran, and this was early on when I would run a pro hormone, was um, ultra draw, which was basically super draw, and uh, trenosome. And that was a popular combo back then. Was it Ananias Labs? I think something like that. It was a popular combo. Yeah, I've, I've heard of Ananias Labs and, and that combo yeah. as well, yeah man, I have never felt so fucking terrible in my life. And, and I had ultra results. You, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like being 205, 210 pounds. I hate it. I despise it. And I easily get there if I just eat more and, and take a, a small, decent sized cycle, but I don't want it. And I was like 210, not even trying to be. And I was in, I remember I, was, I had just kind of gotten to settled in in Maui when I moved there and I I couldn't I, I couldn't get out of bed I didn't want to do anything I, I stopped after like three and a half weeks and still gained like 15 20 pounds man and and I was the worst feeling of my life I never ever want to feel that way again I mean it I was so fucking miserable I I mean yeah and it's not worth it to get why, why the hell would I want to go through all that just to gain 10 or 15 pounds? You know what I mean? It just doesn't make sense. That, that was the problem with the pro hormones. That was the yes. issue with the pro hormones. And I, I remember, you know, looking at it from the angle of someone who's, 
you know, admin on a steroid forum, right? I'm looking at all these pro hormone kids and I'm going, you know, you can only get so far with orals. I mean, you, you're either going to run uh, enough methylated compounds through your body to ruin your liver, or you're going to use them responsibly, which means you're going to run, you should only be running 50 to maybe 90, 90, a hundred megs of something for about four to six weeks. And then you got to drop it. And then what are you going to do? You got nothing else to hold you out. Uh, and there were some pro hormones that were not methylated that didn't really wreck your liver and had some conversions down the line that were beneficial and guys would stack them this and that. But look, man, at the end of the day, you need, you need the, those injectables in there. You need that ester chain to tell me to, yeah. if you really, I mean, if you're really serious, serious and you want to maintain a year round, nice physique and get results that last without that ester. I mean, look, okay. Unless you're doing like a five, six week, cutting little cutting program with Anavar, like I, I've done those that's something like that all right but what's that's, that's like a once a year thing if you really want to get year round results and, and be on you know on the sauce six eight months out of the year take four or six months off and you need the injectables in there because you need them releasing all, all day long here's a question for you uh, uh dylan what talk to me about some of your like favorite stacks of stack and disarms with the classic uh, steroids? Because I've had some some decent stacks. I've tried them. I've stacked GW with Anavar. I thought that was that was great. Stack GW with yes. testosterone. I mean, what are some of like? Let's say I don't mean a guy doing a full out cycle and then just throwing a SARM or two in there. I mean someone saying, "All right, I'm I'm trying to get." gain, lose weight, whatever my goal is, I'm going to stack one or two Psalms with one or two steroids together, a three, four, maybe five compound stack. I think four is a good, good number. What, what am I taking? What kind of dosing? What, what goes well together and complements itself? You know, I mean, so I'm just going to tell you on a personal level, like for me personally, it's always my go-to. It's always my go-to too is GW and S4. That's mine. I'm not saying that's for everybody. That's just for me. You can basically count on me always running Proviron and always running those two SARMs in most every stack I run. Personal preference. Um, I'm not saying that I recommend that for everybody, you know, that type of thing. But that for me is like you gold. base you basically base with that. So if you were gonna yes. bulk, you would base with those three, and then you throw on top whatever else you, you you're looking at or cutting whatever with those three. What do you like about the providing the providing in there? Because I'll tell you what I think about providing. You tell me what you like about it. You know, providing is a funny thing because some people will t tell you that providing does absolutely nothing for them, and I don't I don't want to say that I don't agree. I often wonder if people understand the function and the purpose that it has. Um, and I think that some people don't. Um, and that, that, and I can understand why they would say it doesn't do anything for them. For me, Proviron, anytime that you can free up bound testosterone, um, it's going to help your results. It's going to help basically when you have low testosterone, right, you're obviously not going to be able to build muscle as easy. If at all, you're going to carry fat, whatever. So for me, anytime you're freeing up shit that's bound, it's definitely helping your results. I like the way that it makes me feel. I don't, I don't notice like people will go, Oh, you can use Proviron or Mastron. And I say, that's crazy. I don't think Proviron makes you look like Mastron at all. I think it has those qualities. Uh, some people want to tell you it can be an, an AI. I don't, I don't like that either. I definitely think it could make you use less of one. Um, <clears throat> but, but I, I like it. I always have, um, you just have to have a realistic expectation on what it is and what it does. And if you don't understand that you're probably going to be disappointed. So, I know, I know some guys, some, some of the old school guys, which I would consider you a vet in that regard use would use something like Proviron more as a hormone stabilizer where they kind of know their hormones. Maybe I, I tend to, my prolactin tends to kick, kick up a little bit too much and Proviron will keep that in check. And, and I yeah. 
and actually that is that is that maybe one of the reasons you like it? You feel like though maybe it's it's keeping your 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 prolactin down a little bit. You see a difference there? I I've, I'm always just aware of stuff like that. I don't even know yeah. if I necessarily even have the problem, but because of you know I I'm 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 estrogen prone. I I had you know surgery, mm-hmm. and that was from pre existing. It wasn't from any sort of steroid use. That was all pre existing. My dad Saint had the same shit. It just kind of ran on his side. Um, so I'm always really aware, and I'm always maybe a, overly cautious with people but i always feel like you don't want to have that problem because it, it does take a toll on you mentally it's not the physical it's the mental and you don't even realize it so um i'm reading through the lines here so i hear you saying that you take provirin almost every cycle so that the steroids don't mess with your dick that's what you're saying essentially yes <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way of putting it yeah that's I get the it. simple yeah. way that's a simple way uh yes yeah, so a, a, a lot of a lot of guys a lot of dudes uh as soon as things just shift off a little bit um problems come right away some of us we don't have too many problems un- unless we you know too much deca too much trend you know then you start to see some problems but almost anything anything i do will will, will be beneficial but i know exactly what you're saying man i I talk to a lot of guys work with a lot of dudes that are just like man i just i shot some tests and some and i'm feeling weird i'm not feeling i'm not feeling it i'm like dude she'd be be feeling good right now but yeah 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 yeah. a hormone stabilizer you know a lot of um a lot of vets i've noticed will use will like provirin they'll add it in and it's just that therapeutic that extra little 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 help to make sure that you know the, the lifestyle stays good bro i i'm I, okay everybody's got their side effects that bother them the most right everybody's got their own yeah i i refuse of all the shit and i don't know what it is because i'm not like this guy with big pride and shit and I, you know my wife she'll know if i'm doing anything and if there's a possibility but i that feeling of no interest or whatever i can't handle that shit i'm sorry i just can't that one is like the side effect that I never want to deal with. Some guys don't give a shit. Honestly, they don't. I, I don't want to have that fucking problem. It's too mental on me. You know, um, so it's some not. Guys, a, some guys don't even like their wives anymore. I mean, right? no shit. I mean, I and <laughs> I don't live in that world. You know what I mean? So right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, everybody <laughs> lives in their own little thing. I my world's probably a little different. So. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's it, uh, it's something I, I also keep in mind quite a bit. I keep that. Yeah, in, I keep it in mind a lot, man. I'm sure you do. Because, you know, in, in, in my situation, I'm actually, um, you know, I'm single. I have girls that go out here and there. So when the day comes, I've got to be I got to be ready for the show. You know, they, they're. If I don't, yeah. if I don't perform, that we, I might not. This is not a dress rehearsal. Like I might not, get another, <laughs> I might not get another shot here, right? It's not like, hey, we mm. gave it a shot. We'll just come back tomorrow. We'll try later tonight. You know? <laughs> oh, no, it's like, uh oh, she's leaving. Uh oh, uh oh, you know, it's the, back. The, 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 the 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 hotel coin is running out. Uh oh, <laughs> so. So you gotta, you know, you don't know when it could happen, right? You could, you could just be minding your business on Saturday night, and then you get this text, and you know, next thing you know, you're you're asked to perform, like, you know, like you're on call. So, absolutely, man, definitely, never, ever, ever, no problem. Any no. problem with it? I think you know, I I use the herbals a lot. You know, I got my my yeah. product line, H E Generate and To Generate. I've used that quite a bit. I, I think I. I'm probably, I'm probably on HE Generate now about uh, nowadays about eight good eight to ten months out of the year. I give myself time off. I just think you gotta just you gotta take like a month every every few months where you just are doing absolutely nothing, like nothing. Yeah. Like like yeah. even if you drink coffee, just get off of that shit too. <laughs> just take it's true. It's, take absolutely fucking nothing. So I, I force myself through it. But yeah, man, for the most part is, is, um, it does ruin with your head when you're, when your PP is not reliable, you know, when, oh, you're, when, you're, yeah. when your wee wee's not reliable, like you can't just rely on it. Like you can't, you can't back on it, you know, especially with these women, you, you let your mouth write checks, your dick can't cash. <laughs> it's just not a good it's a bad thing, man. <laughs> it's a bad, bad <laughs> thing, bro. And, um, so 
so you have she, she, she you have a, a wife you're married does she notice because we get a lot of married guy questions does she notice um um what's going on with your cycle is she giving you feedback about what's going on with your cycle because you said she, she'll know when you're doing something because i'm sure it changes everything from the way you smell to the way your body feels to the way you you your fucking skin looks in the morning uh you know how how much can your partner tell about what you're what you're taking? Uh, and is there a difference between when you're taking SARMs or steroids? What's more noticeable on you? Oh, I mean, she first of all, I mean, she she's gonna notice every little difference or change, you know. Right, off, she just knows everything when it comes to that. So she definitely knows. Um, see, like I said, I don't really run much of anything anymore, but I can tell you plenty from you know before. God bless her. I mean, she's had to deal with some shit, you know, because I remember the first time I ran Halo and she asked me if I'd never do that again, which I didn't. Um, that was a one time deal because I was such a fucking like, not like violent or anything like that, but like um, so quick to like on edge. Yeah, I guess was what I mean. Mean like, motherfucker. You were just a just mean. quick to. Yeah. Not take shit. Like I take every little thing you said, like what the fuck do you, you know, that type of shit. I am not that way. So, um, that one was no good. Now, the first time I ran trend, I got greedy and I mean, I got greedy as fuck and I went so high and I mean, I've never had anything hit me emotionally like that. And I wasn't mean. I wasn't bad. I was like down, like not myself depressed, like shit that just is not something you would associate with me. You could, say a lot of things about me but not depressed um <clears throat> then another time and we had just moved to seattle because you know we had been in maui and vegas we didn't have like cold winters or anything well i took trent over the winter and i'd never had night sweats before and for whatever reason same dose pro and i think that was the cycle i ran trend like 12 or 14 weeks just something insanely stupid and and my bed used to be such a fucking disaster and she just dealt with it you know like didn't give me a hard time anything and then i remember the very 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 first storm cycle i ran i think it was 2012 2011 12 anyway <clears throat> i got so veiny and shredded that time especially and it was probably the, because it was the first time i ran them I and it was all it was was s4 and mk2866 because you know, back then that's all there was. Yeah, uh, those yeah it's only about were, two, three songs when they first came out. That's it. Yes, those two and MK six seven seven, but nobody carried it, uh, and yeah. that was it. And then GW came out next, and then LGD came out, and then fuck, then you know what happened. Um, <clears throat> but that time I ran them, we had just started dating, and I was running Melanotan too, and sarms and bro i got so dark i was embarrassed to even fucking you I, I was taking mt2 living in maui okay and <laughs> Damn, geez, yeah and and laying out every day you don't uh, understand i uh, look dumb okay just dumb um how long did it take your skin to go back to roma i mean after you 10, just 10 days i know i remember it was 10 days i know exactly <laughs> i was embarrassed as fuck <laughs> like it was that bad, man. I can only imagine. <laughs> oh, no, it was embarrassing. But I got fucking super dicey, like, and my veins. At that was the first time I was like, "Holy fucking shit!" I can get veins like that, you know. And it wasn't even on steroids. Then, as I ran, you know, steroid cycles, bigger ones, Prima Bowl and Winstrol, those would bring out. I, I got so veiny. And so she always, always saw that. I mean, but then it just got to kind of be like, even when I wasn't on cycle, I was walking around like that, you know, cause you know me, I've always ate and so strict. I mean, you, you've been around me enough and, and I've always been like that. So it's like, there's no off season. And so I always walked around like that, but man, when I take something, fuck, it'd get ridiculous. It'd get ridiculous. Do, I miss you, that. Do you think Psalms coming around have made you use less and less uh, steroids for just your needs for lifestyle and looking good? I mean, have you 
do you think or has it added? How, how, how has your personal lifestyle PD choices changed in the last 10 years with, with SARMs being on the scene? Well, it, it's, and, and I think part of the reason why I got drawn to them so much is it's more of who I am. Like, okay, I love talking steroids. I love coaching steroids. I love teaching them. You name it. You, you know, I've done those videos when I do them, you can tell I enjoy it. And and that's why I do it. But let's let's be realistic with who I am. I'm not a fucking bodybuilder. I never have been. I've never wanted to be. I've never cared to be. Never claimed to be. I was a four sport athlete. I and when I got injured enough to where I lost my scholarship, I went was a model, but I was a fashion model, not a sports model. So I'm not a a guy that walks around big. I don't want to walk around big. I want to look. You know my look. It's like on a cycle, 185, maybe, you know, right around there. I, I don't, 180, 185, nothing huge, but just fucking dice to the fucking max and not like pussy ass dice where anybody could get that six pack. I mean, rock hard with veins, that kind of six pack. The other one don't count, not in my book, you know, so. I, 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 I know you, I, I know you're referring to my six pack. Well, I'm this. I, <laughs> I, 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 I think I think uh, keeping a six pack year round, man, is uh, is an accomplishment for for us uh, uh, to just it's just a reminder to stay on the grind. I uh, I know if I'm doing the right things or if I'm falling off. By the way, my six pack looks in the morning. Absolutely. And, and the more mornings I smile, look in the mirror and flex it and looks good. Big smile. And. If it starts to kind of fade or to look a little bit weird, you know, that look, you're like, all right, I need to get my shit together. So that's, oh, that's, yeah. That's a, that's a good motivating factor. Yeah, absolutely. Go on. I just don't like the guys that, you know, are 130 pounds and call it a six pack. That don't count. That just doesn't count. You know, I want, now you, you, you got to have some arms and some shoulders. Like you got to, you, you got to have something, something, something going. Something going. You don't got to be Mr. Olympia by any means because I certainly haven't been, but. You know the kind of look I'm telling you I like on me. It's yeah, like you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta look like you lift fucking weights and have a six. pack. Yeah, yeah. Not, and not just know, look like you starve and have a six pack. And no, that don't count, man. <laughs> Lack count. of food don't count. No. Yeah, no, you gotta fuck that. You gotta look like you eat it enough. That's right. Yeah, that, that's exactly. the look. Exactly. That's the look. That's the look, bro. Shit. No, and you know what sucks for me? So. <clears throat> Uh, like three, four years ago. And ever since I had a hernia surgery and I had two removed because I had had one for shit since I was 18. And I think I had the surgery when I was 36, 35, 36. So that's a long time. And I got another one that had to come out. So I just said, do them both. So when I flex now in my stomach, it doesn't flex. I, I don't know how to explain it, but because of the multiple surgeries and I had them tie inside instead of putting mesh in there, it just doesn't flex right when I flex. So it's, it's a fucked up looking six pack. Now it's, I used to have a perfect looking one and now I have a, it, it's mental to me because I can't flex it right. You know, because of that. Surgery. How long ago do you have the surgery? You said it's been about three and a half, four years. Ah, so this, this is more recent than the pictures I've seen. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's still there. I mean, I'm, I'm being, I'm one of those people that sees things that don't exist half the time, but I'm telling you, it's not the same. And I can't flex right because of that, but I had to get it removed. I, there's nothing I can do about it. So one thing I've noticed, bro, is throughout the years now that I'm, that I'm uh, 40, uh, your skin just starts to behave differently. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't reel back. It doesn't go, go back so quickly. I had a, I had tennis elbow for months. It's chronic, nasty, couldn't work out. And, I'm back. I'm back now, and when and now that I'm back, I realize that it takes you longer to get back on once you fall off, once you hit our age group, and also your your skin just starts fucking with you a little bit. It doesn't, it doesn't want to go back as quickly as it usually does, and then you end up having to fast more and and to to go to go harder. But I think that's probably one of the biggest changes I've noticed through this my, my skin around my abdomen, and arms everywhere. It just it behaves different now than it used to you lose some of that elasticity it just doesn't doesn't know doesn't always look like plastic <laughs> it starts no, to look like something no, different. no no 
No, it does not, man. I mean, why why do you think I've been getting Botox for so fucking long? I don't it it, it sucks. It just it sucks, man. But what are you gonna do? All you can do is try to delay things as long as you can, and that is by continuing to work out. But but and this has been very hard for me, and I'm sure it was for you. You have to know as you get a little bit older, you've got to take things in stride a little bit more. You can't, I used to always go work out if I was sick. I don't do that anymore. I don't. I used to, you know, try to go an hour extra or lift five and six days a week. I don't do that anymore it, because you're just going to get injured and you're not going to be able to work out at all, you know, or it's going to be detrimental. You just got to know and and go with your limitations. Otherwise, you're just not going to lift at all or you're not going to run at all or, you know, None here's, of it. Here's a good question uh, to lead from that. Uh, which arm do you think is the best one for healing injuries? And let's say you have a, a muscle injury, which is just a just a tear, uh, or you have something more more uh, serious around the tendons or ligaments, connective tissue. Would which arm is the better one for for these? So you're always going to go to two right off the jump. MK six seven seven and MK two eight six six. Right. Uh, and then my question is to the person I'm making the recommendation to, um, do you have a short-term injury or like a tendonitis or something? Do you have a long-term injury, torn ACL, torn, torn ligaments, torn meniscus, things of that nature that are going to take a little bit longer to heat? Because MK677 takes a while to get going. But it's going to be the closest thing to HGH that you're going to find aside from real HGH. So my ideal for anybody with an injury is you stack them both. You cycle the 2866, stay on the 677 because you're going to want to stay on it. People, I see a lot of people telling people to just run it 12 weeks, run it three months. That's fine. I w I'm not going to argue with that because you're still going to get something out of it. But if you want to get maximum results, you're going to run it a good six months to a year, just like you do HGH. Um, there's so, studies go back to the 90s on 677 and 2866. And you can see when IGF levels have gone up the most and they've done year long studies and they've done six months and the years were always the maximum results. But you don't have to do that to get results either. But my ideal is take those two, cycle your 2866, Keep running the 677, um, and then you take your four weeks off, and then you can cycle your 2866 again and after you run your mini PCT, and you've stayed on 677 the whole time. So that would be the way. Just to give people the names on those, that is Osterin, and what is the other one? And Neutral Ball, right? Yep. Yep. Austrian and neutral ball. Okay, so so uh, the Austrian works directly on the on the affected tissue. Uh, neutral ball works by promoting the secretion of of growth hormone, and the growth hormone, the additional secretion of it, is what actually heals the injuries. Would, would, that, would I be correct, or am I uh, pissing outside the pot here? No, no, no. I mean, there's really not much more to it than that. I mean, you're you're right on the money with it um you know does one s4 more... do you think do you, do you consider s because s4 i mean look I, I when i trained mma and i and i took s4 i mean dude i was able to come back day after day after day and just keep doing it over and over again it would is it is it healing injuries as well or is it just doing something else to give you that stamina because my my body even didn't feel uh uh as as beat up as worn down while I was at S4. You know, S4, I, I, I've said this time and time and time again. And, and a lot of times people don't understand how strong S4 is. Like I will argue all day long that S4 will make you stronger than any other storm. You may want to argue S23 with me on that. Um, but S4 is just because S4 doesn't make you gain 20 pounds. Not every single compound that's extremely strong, take your halo tested, for example, is going to make you gain weight or a lot of weight. You can, you'll gain a good five, six pounds with S4, but 
it's strong and it it makes you feel explosive and energetic and you get that muscle hardening out of it and that lean muscle growth it's very if you were looking at a steroid to compare it to you would want to look at anabar um i it's i i like to say wind straw too it's just not that kind of strength um but it has a lot of similar but you know anabar and wind straw have a lot of similar qualities wind straw is just stronger with more side effects um i mean you can get down into it i i and argue about which one has more hardening vascularity but they're pretty similar for fuck's sake it's just the one stronger than the other so s4 could really i could say it's similar to both but you should if you have good quality S4, you're going to feel really good on it. You know, like you were just describing that you feel. I fucking love S4. I've said that forever, uh, <clears throat> that it's one of the strongest and most effective. And I'll always say that. It's just that I like GW and, and always go to that first. But S4 has always been number two for me. Always. Is an S4 running out in the market where you can't find the, the raw materials anymore? Or, is this a, or am I hearing it wrong? It's it's gotten more difficult for sure, and um, I don't know a hundred percent, but there's something when they produce S4 that they are saying causes some sort of problem in the air. I don't know what it is. I didn't get a full explanation on this. I'm just speaking on what I was told by factory workers, but it's something that it's uh, putting out into the air when they make it that it's banned. So they're taking a risk when they make it. Um, that's all I know in, in, as far as to why. But That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that's what I was told from somebody directly at the factory when I was trying to get information because I heard that and I, you know, I don't want, I wanted real information, not secondhand information. So um, I, I'm kind of privy to that on certain things. So I went and found out, but that was all I really got out of it. But it's, probably better than anything else anybody else has heard yeah i mean it, it would be interesting what's going to happen when uh when and if it does become a fully banned it'll be really interesting to see what actually goes on you know i i i, I used to let things bother me and get all worked up about them and shit but they these fuckers with over there they're resilient they always find a way every time you hear something this is going to happen this is going to happen they're always writing you back or saying something or whatever about oh well we're still going to do this this and this i mean they always fucking figure something out they go to a different country they they were very resourceful when anybody that can make forgeries like they do over there and convince you you're buying a louis vuitton and a rolex to the extent they can do it now and, and it looks, it can pass authentication. They, they're resourceful, you know. So I don't get too caught up into that shit. The demand is just, the demand is just huge, bro, because uh, people yeah. use them, feel good on them, have good results on them. And I've said this before, I, I do just fine with the steroids we've always had, but I've added psalms because they have additional effects and additional things that they can do that other steroids just can't do. The steroids we know just can't do at all. So oh, it's the I reason. Know. Yeah, it's the reason I, I I use them and I incorporate them into cycles because of the additional different effects they have. Not not so much the muscle building. Well, and you know what always gets me is people, and it's just like every and, and i get it because this is just kind of how life is and media is a prime example right how everything is they they hear what they want to hear they make you hear what they want you to hear that type of deal right so my point with that is oftentimes people have well oftentimes for fuck's sake let's just let me just be real here a majority of the time when i get lash you know lashed out at or backlash on certain things i've said or recommended people have totally either not listened to what i said mixed my words twisted my words heard what they wanted you know all of that shit i would never sit i, I would be insulting you telling you that oh the storms are stronger than steroids they're better than the, they're an alternate you know way of doing things for people that don't want side effects don't want to inject uh we, we could go down the line nobody should ever try to create the narrative that they're going to give you the same results as steroids. What they do is give you steroid-like results. 
That's far different than telling somebody that you get that kind of result. But people don't even grasp the concept of what that even means, that statement. Nobody with any sort of brain is going to tell you they will get you the same results as steroids. Um, saying something is like that, you can interpret that however you want. I could tell you that you get results that steroids could give you just to a lesser extent, however the fuck you want me to say it. But the, the meaning is all the same. They're not as strong, but you're still going to get damn good results. Period. That's it. You're just going to have less side effects easy, and easier recovery. And my argument, though, is SARMs gains generally are going to be easier to keep because you haven't had as much strain on your body. The recovery time is so much easier. Um, and you can cycle them more because you don't need as much time off in between cycles. So maybe in the long run, you could look at it and go, well, shit, this person over here did three SARM cycles or four. This guy did two big cycles and see where they are at the end because this guy's had such a hard time recovering. Initially, the steroid's always going to be stronger. Come on, man. I mean, seriously, no one's going to argue that. But over time, there could be an argument there. Um, but, you know, that's that's an argument that we'd have to sit and go through and monitor and take like 20 subjects that all have the same this this and this and to to deem it accurate no matter how many i've seen and done that's what somebody would want so that would take time and effort but i think that over time you could say well shit i had an easier time doing it this way and i don't feel like i got that much more the other way just depends so, I mean, I, I, I was going to ask you that, actually. I have it here in a, in a list of like, tiny notes, that questions to ask. And one of them was, do you feel that there's a difference between keeping your SARMs gains or, or keeping your steroid gains? And you're telling me you feel the SARMs gains are actually easier to keep, huh? Do you, do you have any, uh, any theories as to why that could be? Well, yeah, I mean, like I was getting into there when I was going yeah, you, on and you, on. You, you said something, it, it, beats, it beats up your body less and you're obviously going to be able to keep most of your muscle when your body has gone through less stress. So that, that that's a very, I mean, that's a very good point. Do you think that that's all or could there be more? No, I mean, I get going on tangents and I'm sorry. Um, I shouldn't do that shit, but I get into it because I enjoy talking. Nah, about that, that's it, so. what we're here for, man. Don't worry about yeah. it. The um, floor, is, floor is yours, man. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. No. Yeah. So I, anytime <clears throat> that you shut yourself down and, and that's with any steroid, right? Aside from provirus, but basically any steroid, it's going to take a lot longer to recover. And not only that, and like we, we said earlier, most people will tell you after a steroid cycle, even with a strong solid PCT, they never fully bounce back. You, you'd be okay. And I'm, and, and I'm an advocate for PCT and whatever, but you got to understand knowing and going into it that if you're going to cycle long term, you're, you're probably going to end up on TRT. Let's just let's just keep it real. That's probably going to it's not a guarantee, but chances are pretty high. Right. You're rolling the dice and, and those are your odds. I, odds are you will end up on TRT when you get older. Very correct. Right. And 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 it could be because you need it medically or it could be like some idiot like myself that well fuck it i'm just going to stay on just because that's just what i want to do right but there's or, a pretty or, some, damn good or sometimes three uh a, a test levels of 300 just aren't good enough under no. any circumstances no i mean no, that's that's all and even though that's normal range you just look at that test and you're like not living like that fuck that no so you just put yourself a trt even though at that uh with those test results, you you might not need it. Your doctor might say, "Fuck it, you're fine. You don't you don't need it, right?" Yeah, and that's that's just it, man. There's so many different scenarios and and things, and you might just expect that as a man aging anyway. I mean, you got to be aware of it at least that it's possible, right? I mean, there's certain things women have to be aware of, and certain things men as they get older. And one for a man that's extremely important for quality of life is your fucking testosterone levels. So you got to be aware. And, and no, so, um, but anytime that you're shutting yourself down, you, you're running an oral and you're beating yourself up because, you know, in PCT, the one thing that bothers me with PCT is the obvious is the testosterone shutdown, right? 
But people forget about the other aspects of PCT that are important cortisol going up, which is likely going to happen. That can fucking ruin your cycle. You know, all the toxicity that you've built up, even without an oral steroid, steroids can still hurt your cholesterol. They can still hurt your blood pressure. Maybe yep, not liver. near the, yes, not to the extent of the toxic oral, but come on, man. It still hurts you internally. We know that. Yep. Yep, kidneys too. I, I mean, we just not as severe as other things. We talk about the more severe side effects, but yeah, they affect everything. Yes, and and that's just it. Just because, and that's one of the the battles that I've fought for I don't know how long is that people will say that they're running an oral. Well, should I run liver fifty two or should I run this? Should I run that? Well, yeah, but that isn't even remotely close to everything you need to be protecting right now. I mean, your blood pressure, it, it's hard to say which is the most important, right? But to not even acknowledge blood pressure, you know what I mean? That, that scares the shit out of me. Not addressing kidneys, which you know are going to get hit. Not, I mean, it goes, it's, you got to protect all your internals. And then in PCT, you got to, you got to start addressing that. Right. So, and you also don't want any sort of estrogen in PCT. So there's a lot of shit that people don't address. And they think, oh, well, they're trying to beef up PCT. I don't need all that shit. Well, okay, I just ran you down all the reasons why you do fucking need it. You know what I mean? I, I don't. That's one of those arguments where it shouldn't be an argument in, in my view. I don't know. But no, nah, pe with people, people want to take uh, four or five. PEDs compounds in their cycle and then only need to take one or two drugs for PCT and be fine. And it kind of doesn't work that way, man. No, no, geez. Gosh, damn. No, it doesn't. And, and I hate that. You know how long we've been fighting that battle and it's always yeah, going to be a battle. Man. One, one of the things that, um, one of the aspects, man, I, I'll tell you here today, I don't, I don't know if I've ever put it into words quite like this, but one of the aspects about our, our, our flow, our industry, you know, the guys we deal with. The one thing that makes me kind of sad sometimes is when I see uh, Bob doing five, six different kinds of PEDs, uh, you know, everything under the sun, and he's just showing up at the office every day looking brolic. And Bob doesn't compete. Bob doesn't do shit with it. Been married to the same lady for 15, 20 years. God bless them. But these guys, to, to just kind of look good and have a desk job, it, they they are taking everything under the sun. It's it's almost like a hobby going going out of control. I think if everybody had very just very clear expectations of what they wanted from their physique and their performance, and then did proper research and you know then got on the on the forums, asked questions. I think a lot of guys could get to where they really want to get to using using less compounds and and hurting their body less. But a lot of guys just overdo it, man. I've seen. I've seen some cycles out there where I'm like looking at this and I'm like, I'm thinking like, when, when are you competing, dude? Like, this is, this is, this is very intricate. And the guy will message me back, say, I'm, I'm not competing. I just, I'm just trying to just want to get back to, uh, to my, the weight that I was three years ago. And I'm just, some, some of it, it just seems a little bit excessive and that that's, I like everybody we deal with. I like helping everybody out. I like I like our 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 guys are are good people. It it the only thing that does get a little bit a little bit sad and annoying to see is people abusing shit completely unnecessarily. No 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 need. No, I man, I I've said this a long time, and I've been called names and shit about oh I'm too conservative this or that, but a little bit goes a long way. You know what I mean? And hey, I've ran bigger cycles. I'm not going to, I will always sit here and tell you where I made a mistake, where I was wrong. Y you know, I don't, I don't care. I, I, I'm not, I don't have a pride thing where I can't admit wrong. It's just not necessary. It, it's really not. I, shit, I can tell you right now, I've ran cycles with four, five, six compounds, stupid cycles I would never recommend just a hypocrite, just a fucking hypocrite, but I did it. Okay. I man up to it. And I, I'm telling you, one of my favorite cycles ever was just test Primo and Anivar, just test Primo and Anivar. And that MK2866 and S4 cycle I told you about, that's one oh, of my yeah. favorites. I'll never forget that. Two, two fucking of the lightest SARMs you can run. I'll never yeah. forget it. 
So yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, it's it's all about the lifestyle. It's kind of uh, we get a lot of guys that come in really pumped up after having let go and and not showing up to the gym and and not watch what they ate for years. They just suddenly want to get back and they want to do everything. And now it's just a lifestyle. We sprinkle the drugs on top of the lifestyle a little bit here and there and enhance it. But at the end of the day, we're going to be out running. We're going to be in the gym. I'm going to be in the dojo. We're going to be doing something, whether we're taking anything or not, whether we're looking good or not. It's just, it's just something you need. You've made part of what, what makes you happy and a lot of guys miss that miss that point miss that out i think it, it, you know I, I get asked by guys that have aspirations as far as professional as to what they can take what they won't be detectable and won't get in trouble and i always say man are you seeing a sports psychologist yet because that that could probably get you a longer way uh having your mindset right a longer way than any kind of uh, magic potions and it's the other thing I, I deal with with people a lot that ask for help, especially with cutting, because, you know, I like to I like to sport my abs year round and I like to just have good, 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 good physique year round. And guys, guys ask me what they should be doing, this and that cycle stacking this, this or that. And I go, listen, first thing you need is your mindset's got to be right. You got to you got to make your body and your physique and the way you look super important super important to the point that if you're getting out of shape, you'll, you'll go in and start doing something about it right away without waiting for me or anybody else to tell you. And a better and more and more important than any cycle, any drugs you can take is getting your mindset right. So that dieting and training and exercising become something you do naturally, something you enjoy doing something that becomes a part of you. And at the end of the day, that's, I think that's the big part that most guys miss. And, and it's the part that like it, I don't know if it comes easy to you or I, I know I've, I don't know if it ever came real easy to me. I just get up and do it, but it's the part that kind of guys like you or I, we've been in, in this thing since we were kids training. Then later on the drugs came around and we're doing drugs and, <laughs> and we just, it's just something we've wanted to do. And, and I run across a lot of guys that, that are, are, are more worried about researching their cycle than actually really getting their, their inside, their, their, their heart, their mind in the right place to just make a lifestyle out of this and and just you know sprinkle like salt bay you just sprinkle the the the, the drugs on top of, of an already good lifestyle that, that that's been good and consistent for years you sprinkle a little bit of drugs and now you got something magical you got something going on but um these guys that hit you up with these huge cycles after having been bat fat for years or or being out of shape it's just not it's no bueno i, I don't I don't like I don't like talking to guys like that to be honest. Man. No, and you you you've seen my responses over the years. You already know how I feel about that. So <laughs> I don't think there's any confusion. And and yeah. most people know that they shouldn't. Ask. There's always people that don't know me or don't know about me. But the guys that have been around me know not to even fucking ask me that type of thing because I just I I try I've tried to grow more patient the older I've gotten because certain things resonate with you a little bit more, but man, I I'm, my patience is very fucking low on that topic right there. Yeah. I know one of the videos that you, uh, one of the videos that you've made that I remember I enjoyed quite a bit uh, was the video telling people like, Hey, don't use steroids. If you're fat, don't, don't come and ask me about using steroids. If you're 25, 26% body fat, like you're not, you're not ready for it yet. And no. I, 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 say that a lot too if you, you're in you're in the 20s body fat you um you got some core lifestyle issues to deal with before you even think about steroids you well that's just it and people then people get fucking mad it's like look dude i i'm not going to tell you what you want to hear i will never you ask my wife i will i don't even tell her what she wants to hear but she loves me for it i always tell her you, if you don't tell me, I don't know. If I'm doing something fucking annoying, just tell me. I'm not one of those pussies that's going to get all hurt over it. I won't even think twice. I get mad if you don't tell me something, right? But all these motherfuckers, they want to live with rainbows and unicorns every day. And that's not life. If you ask me a question, you come to me knowing I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to hear so I can help you, you know? Don't come to me if you want somebody to be a yes man or tell you what you want to hear. I'm like the last fucking guy on the planet Earth you want to, you know, come to for that. Because I feel like if you're coming to me and you trust me to ask me, I got to go out of my way to give you the best information. 
you know, not fucking butter you up and sugarcoat shit. So don't ask me for that. I will tell you exactly what you need to hear to help you get to where you want to be, period. So that's where I am with it. I can, you know, I can go yeah. on and on on that. <laughs> good deal. Well, listen, man, a uh, good, good podcast today, man. I really appreciate it. We have to uh, do this again. I'll have some, yeah. uh, I'll have some, uh, is it, is the weeks going? I'll, I'll jot down some more questions and try to have you back in a couple of weeks so we can, uh, so I can pick your brain some more. Hey man, listen, great podcast today. Thank you for coming out. Uh, let's do some plugs. Where can people find you if they want to, they want to see some of your content, they want to get in touch, uh, throw some URLs out there, some, some places or some search terms people need to be putting in on YouTube and, and stuff to find you. Yeah. So the, we're trying to build the, the YouTube channel back up for the 800th time. Um, but people are finding it now. You can just look up Dylan Jamelli or you can type in P E fitness. Either one's going to pop up, so you can find us there. Now you can find me on the forums. I'm on evolutionary.org. I'm on isarms.com. I'm on elitefitness.com and uh, anabolics.com. And also elitefitness.com backslash videos. A lot of archive stuff because a lot of people always ask me, where can I see your old videos? Well, there's, there's a lot over there. They're not all there, but there's a lot. It's definitely worth your time to uh, go check it out. And then, you know, you can... A lot of people follow me on social media, um, Dylan Jamelli, everywhere you can find me, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Those are the three I do. Um, so you can follow me there as well. And uh, that's that's the best ways to find me. You can email me, Dylan, at isarms.com. Send me questions, comments, all of that there as well. YouTube, so still, YouTube still fucking with your channel, man? Damn. Man, yeah. you know how many channels I've lost and how many hundreds of thousands of subscribers? It, it makes you sick. Damn, there was the, 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 the first set of channels that, that you had issues with. It was over some beef with some some influencers or some guys or something. Is that has that always carried on or or is now YouTube doing it on its own or did the same clowns that, that you've been? It's, it's just people, man. And, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, there's people that don't like you. There's people that feel like you're hurting their business for whatever reason. I don't know. There's people that who knows man there's people that just flat ass don't like you for whatever reason because you're out there doing something you know so, that's so just it's, life so, so it's, at this point there's not youtube doing it it's some assholes uh i'll mess with your channel yeah i mean why would youtube let all the other channels you know that's that what i was gonna up, that's what up. i was gonna get at i mean there's 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 a lot of guys there, there's a lot of dudes out there that have this type of content but they're not they're not getting fucked with i think it's it's I think it's extremely unfair and and i it's weird it's weird because you, you see a lot of these channels so i, I wanted to, i thought maybe from the original issue uh with the, with the with these guys you, you had the issue with that then youtube kind of um kind of knows you from that and blah 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 but it seems like it's just been an ongoing thing huh it's terrible you know i try to mind my own fucking business as much as i can too and and especially now bro like i don't you kind of know how i've gotten now over the years i don't i don't get into any of that stuff i i'm there for a purpose my purpose is not to get involved in pissing matches and arguments and this and this and oh you don't agree with me well fuck you i'm gonna ban you that type of shit kind of how i used to be i i don't i don't i just don't want it. I, i'm too i'm not too old but i'm just in a different place now man it, it, because you know i i i have my own gym i i do all the online work that i do i fucking resell shoes and and you know, I'm into all of that too. And I'm into so many different things. I just want to fucking relax and not deal with bullshit. So I don't, people that still want to go back on old shit, I can't control that. I just, I don't have time. So, so sneakers, wait, I, I had no idea Jim, Dylan Jamali was a hype beast. Bro, go watch some of my new YouTube videos and just look in the background. You can you can see yourself. I mean, I've seen I've seen I've seen the the collection, but I thought it was a personal collection. I didn't know you were a hype beast. Oh, I'm a hype beast. I, I you know what? I am plugged in to like sneaker monitors. I'm in these sneaker groups that I've. It's taken a long time to get into those. You don't just get in, and I have notifications. My poor wife, she helps me now with with like trying to, to cop shoes. I mean, we have notifications going off 24 hours a day and it's not just for that. It's for 
playstations xboxes i don't stop hustling man like it's an all-day thing every day it never stops on sundays it, it, it never stops it just doesn't so so oh man that that's that's incredible bro i had so is, i mean is it profitable is it doing well Fuck yeah, it's profitable. And not only is it profitable, and I get free, my, my shoes are paid for on top of it, you know? Wow, that's incredible. So, yeah, it's profitable if you know what you're doing. It's like the, the weed smokers that smokes all this weed. I can't keep every fucking pair of shoes I get, you know? Right, 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 right. You, it's hard to sell weed if you're smoking all the shit. You, you know, uh, uh, Jeezy's Kanye, he's, uh, he's uh, $6 billion rich from those sneakers. I know it. I know it. It's insane. It's, it's insane. insane. If you know what you're doing, you got the right equipment and the right robots and stuff, you can make a lot of fucking money. All right. A so, lot. so you have a gym, you have all this online content that you create. You're a hype beast, profitable hype beast. We just found out. How 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 do how the fuck do you have time to do all of this in one day? Or I don't I don't know because you know what else? I run 10 miles a day and then I obviously I lift too. Uh, it's just, it's hard, man. I, I have days where I'm just like, man, fuck. That's why I, I, when we went on vacation, finally last week, I, I have said now it's the best trip I've ever had. Who, who planned that vacation? Who made all the reservations and did all the, all the, Me. That I always hours. do. I, I, do that, I mean, that takes that. hours to do. You know what? Here, here, I'll tell you real quick how that happened. My birthday, February 23rd, I was sitting here and all of a sudden I said, you know what? I've had enough. And I said, Queenie, I yelled, Queenie, come here. I said, we're going to fucking, we go to Longboat Key. I said, we're going to Longboat Key, okay? And she's like, okay. You know, and she said, and I said, here, let's pick out a condo. And so we sat here for 30, 40 minutes, picked out the one we liked. I had the tickets booked and everything, and then about 20 more minutes, and we were fucking set. And that's it. That's, it was. That's, I'm, that's cool, I will man. do that where I'll wake up one day and go, enough is enough. And then, and that's it. That's awesome. That's a did it, it, it got you pumped up to come back and get back to working more. I mean, that's what that's what time off does for me. I feel like I need to just get back and, and take on the world at that point. Makes you, oh, makes I you mean, feel a little guilty, I think. When you take time off and you're not doing anything, it makes you feel a little guilty. I've been getting up at 5 a.m., 5 and 5 30, where I was getting up at 8, 9, 10 o'clock because I was staying up late working. Now I rearranged it. I'm up at like 5, 5 30. My run is done by you know, eight o'clock, 10 miles down, boom. I'm like, oh man, that's done. I got the whole day now. I go to the gym later and they, I don't like to go right after I run um, <clears throat> if I don't have to. And so then I got the whole day to be focused and I'm just deadlocked in, right? Not worrying about, oh fuck, I got to run in three or four hours. You know, that type of deal. Cause I slept too late and I got to do this, this, and this. So that trip helped me get on a better routine, you know? But, yeah, but motivate you, know, you refresh you yes i just i i have I, I like to ride my i have a harley i like to ride so i try to at least get 30 40 minutes of time where i can just go clear my head that does it for me it really does you, you get you get on that harley with uh with jordan sneakers and uh and a throwback jersey don't you I, I i get on with a throwback all day my sneakers though if i'm going somewhere i want to wear them they're in my in the side pocket over there i have a carrying case for shoes only and then i put it one of the saddle saddle backs back there and then i'll put them on when i stop and wherever i'm going so but i ain't so wearing those you used to, 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 to ride the, the the harley oh just depends i got some older nikes and old adidas i just throw on and all of them and nothing special none of my good shit just my everyday no, no, wear you don't you don't throw any biker boots along with the, with the throwbacks and <laughs> You don't see me in biker boots, brother. <laughs> good shit, man. Oh, so yeah, definitely, bro. See, we 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 said goodbye, and then we we spoke another half hour. So listen, oh, man. It's, it's awesome podcast, bro. Have yourself a, a great day, and and uh, we'll stay in touch, brother. We'll have you back again in a couple of weeks, and we'll uh, we'll pick out another good topic to go over. Sounds good, my man. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You too.